Today we'll recreate an SVG file from the Cool Shapes library, which is not imported correctly in Affinity. Recently I stumbled upon this nice website with shapes you can use on any design or dev project. It is called Cool Shapes and they have a nice list of basic and interesting shapes. You can download the shape you like very easily in SVG or PNG format. Let me download this shape as an SVG file to my Downloads folder. I'll switch to Affinity Designer and import the downloaded SVG file. To do that, I'll open up Explorer and go to my Downloads folder. I can now drag and drop it into Affinity Designer. Well, that looks awkward, nothing like the shape we were expecting. I'll switch back to the browser and download the PNG version. Let's get this PNG into Designer by going back to the Windows Explorer and import it from the Downloads folder by dragging it into Designer, just like we did with the SVG file. Well, that looks much better. Clearly the SVG version is not imported correctly into Designer. I can double click on the SVG layer to open it up as a new document and see if there is anything we can do to fix it. Looks like there is just a group with a mask and some objects. The main shape we are looking for is nowhere to be found. This probably means that the SVG file we downloaded uses features that are not supported by Designer. The SVG support in Affinity is usually pretty good, but once in a while you will encounter issues, especially when advanced SVG properties are used. Let's open up the SVG file in an SVG editor and see what is happening. I'll use the online boxy SVG editor which will allow us to view and understand the SVG file. From my downloads folder I'll drag the SVG file to boxy to load it up. As we can see the SVG file shows up correctly. Let's click on the elements section located at the bottom to see the SVG structure so we can have a look in detail how this SVG graphic is structured. The SVG structure is very close to HTML and is quite readable. If you have some experience with HTML, it definitely would make sense to you. When we look closely, we can see that the actual shape is applied as a mask to the group containing two ellipses and a rectangle path. I'll drag this path out from the mask so we can see the shape more clearly. Well, it is filled with white so we can't really see it. Let's change the fill color to black and there is our shape we're looking for. While the shape is selected, I'll right click on it and choose copy. I think you can also use the shortcut key Ctrl or Command C. This will copy the shape to the clipboard and when we switch to designer, I can paste it into the document, which is pretty awesome. Excellent, we got the shape now in Affinity. What we are now missing is the nice gradient of the shape. Let's go back to Boxy and see how this is achieved in the SVG file. As we already noticed, the actual shape is masking these elements. Let's move them out of the group so we can see more clearly what they are. So there is a white box. On top of it, a yellow box with a lower opacity and then a group with two circles and a box. There is however a filter applied to this group, let's check what this filter does. In short, it just applies a Gaussian blur to the group. Let me quickly remove this blur. Now we can see the objects without the blur. This is actually very close what Affinity Designer imported in the first place. The gradient effect is achieved by blurring the three objects with each other. Because the blur will create semi-transparent areas, the yellow box is used to fill those areas, creating a nice gradient blend. Actually, this is a very nice way of creating multicolor gradients. Awesome! Now that we know how the gradient is set up, let's switch back to Affinity and recreate it. I'll double click on the imported SVG to open it up in a new tab. I will remove the mask from the main group with the objects and then copy it to the clipboard. 
Back in our original document, I'll paste it and resize it so we can start recreating the same gradient. First, I'll duplicate the bottom white layer and use this as a mask for the main group. We now need to blur the group with the circles. We can use the quick effect panel for this. I'll increase the blur radius all the way to the max to get that gradient effect. The slider goes to 100 pixels. But we can push it further just by entering a custom value in the text box. Excellent, that looks much better. Now, the yellow box below the group with the circles had a lower opacity, so let me decrease that too. Now that the gradient is finished, I will select the shape and move it to the group to use it as a mask. I can disable the box mask and enable the shape mask. Perfect, we got the shape in Affinity. Let me enable the PNG version so we can compare it. The gradient color is a bit off. Let me reposition the group with the circles. That looks much closer to the original. I'm also missing a bit of the yellow. To fix that, I'll increase the opacity of the yellow box below. And we got almost the same gradient. Pretty cool. By the way, if we go back to the Cool Shape site, they also offer a noised version of the shape. When we turn it on, we can see that the fill of the shape has some noise. We can easily recreate this in Affinity. In Affinity Photo, we could just add a live noise filter to the group we mask with the shape. As I'm using Designer right now, where this is not available, I'll share a different but simple technique. I'll add a fill layer and move it on top of the other layers in the group. Next, we're going to make sure the fill gets a neutral 50% gray. In the color panel, we have the option to use Add Noise to our fill color. If you can't see the noise here, just press on the circle with the color. This will toggle between opacity and noise. Once it shows noise, increase the slider to add the noise to your fill. Now that we got a noisy gray image, we can apply this to the gradient below. And for that, we can use the overlay or the soft light blend mode depending on how strong you want it. This works because in overlay or the soft light blend mode, neutral gray has no effect. So only the noisy parts are blended. Pretty awesome. By the way, to save you some time, I already converted all the cool shapes for you. You can find a link provided in the description or use the QR code shown right now. Thanks again for tuning in and I hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Until the next video.